to tap one kilo, kilowatt per square meter at a time yourself, as these anti-technologists suggest, these small is beautiful people suggest, <laughs> is grotesque megalomania is an overestimation of technology, is thinking that a puny thing like man can compete with nature by doing its work. If you were to build a solar car, for example, and here I'm assuming 100% efficiency, which in fact is about 5% now when the sun is out. <laughs> 10% in the laboratory. If you wanted to have a car that runs on solar electricity, 100% efficient collectors with a reasonable area on the roof, you would have to, it's a simple calculation, you would have to let it stand in the sun for a month in order to do one day's driving. <laughs> or alternatively, you would have to use a collecting area of 80 square yards, by which time it would work better as a sail in the wind. <laughs> and these are facts that not a hundred Einsteins can remove because solar power in its diluteness has this upper limit that cannot be changed. If you look closely, at the solar advocates, they're not really after energy. Some of them have openly said so. Lovins is opposed to central generation of uh, electricity, even by solar means. Others, Ehrlich and others, have said it would be crazy to give uh, people a, be, uh, a misfortune. I'd have to look for the quotation if we discovered a cheap and abundant source of energy for fear of what people might do with it. All the time you have this totalitarian aspect, Ehrlich says uh, we'll have to coerce people, others regard people as uh, stupid, it's just like giving them a Tommy gun, says Ehrlich, because uh, they're stupid and don't know what's good for them. They want to legislate energy, they do not want to let the free market work. Uh, that I should point out that solar energy has been economically a wonderful success only in one case, and that is all the millions that the solar consultants in Washington are raking in with all their reports that remain on paper because the sun still only gives one kilowatt per square meter when it's out. <laughs> now, apart Apart from the hoax, or partial hoax, because I repeat, solar energy should be used and is a good thing in its place. Apart from the hoax of solar energy, and I haven't even talked about wind. Oh yes, let me uh, just throw in one other aspect of solar energy. Solar energy is not safer than nuclear energy. It is far, far more dangerous if for no other reasons than, always, than for its low concentration. But there are other reasons. It is untrue that solar energy has no wastes. Solar energy is not self-sustaining. With fossil-fired electricity, nuclear electricity, you can make the materials for more nuclear plants, for more fossil-fired plants. With solar energy, you certainly cannot now, and very likely, you will never be able to. The, uh, uh, well, I don't have too much time, I won't go into the details. The fact is that in order to produce the materials, and the materials, because of the diluteness, take a thousand times more energy, and in general materials, than concentrated plants a thousand times more because a thousand megawatt fossil-fired or nuclear plant stands on 25 acres. 
the same capacity solar needs 50 square miles a thousand times more materials if it's concentrated in the 50 square miles it needs even more if it's distributed among many people for the same reason as uh, you use more fat when uh, you fry hamburgers in uh, a thousand families than if uh, McDonald's put them into one big pot and does them all at one time for basically the same reason uh, distributed solar energy uses even more materials. Now these materials, glass, aluminum, steel, etc., cannot be produced without wastes and there is only one type of waste that is temporarily toxic, that is minuscule, many millions of times smaller than hitherto, one of the great advantages of nuclear energy, and that can be totally removed from the biosphere, and that is nuclear wastes. So solar energy is not without wastes. Now, about safety, usually the way safety of electric power is assessed is to look at the energy produced, usually a billion megawatt hours, and count the number of dead, injured, diseased that had to be paid for that amount. If you do that to the various sources, you will see that nuclear power comes out way, way ahead. 50 to 1 in industrial diseases, in mines, for example. Bigger numbers in, uh, in other cases. If you do this to solar, then you have to remember what little energy you're producing with this. It is true that if you go on the roof to clean your collectors, you're very unlikely to fall off the roof and have an accident. But if you do fall off, you will have killed yourself for a crummy three kilowatts. <laughs> Now, if you add this up in competition with the other sources, you cannot, of course, make a billion megawatt hours ever by piddling around with three kilowatts at a time. But if you were to prorate it in casualties, you would come out with carnage proportions. Let me remind you that only in CB and TV antennas and only through elect electrocution in the United States, 265 people were killed last year. Even though most of this is done by experts, but 265 possibly non-experts got themselves tangled up in the electric wires, got themselves killed. If you think about doing the same thing in every home, not to speak about the storage problem, sulfur sulfuric acid for the kids to play with and so on, <laughs> You will come out with casualties like a major war. So solar power is not safer. As a distributed source, it is far less safe. The other hoax is that nuclear power is linked to big government. In a way, this is true. All good lies must have some element of truth in it. In a country where everything from uh, the aerospace industry to peanuts is linked to big government. It's not surprising <laughs> that nuclear power is linked to big government also. That does not mean that it must be linked to big government. But for one thing is certain, look at the alternative. Look at what happens when the energy runs out. What happens to big government then? In California, you know better than others how Jerry Brownout is pushing for coercive measures against the utilities to finance conservation measures, how gadgets are being introduced to switch off the consumer when he is taking too much, and who will be decide who is taking too much, who the energy pigs are, Big Brother, of course. Or if you want it more drastically, take a look behind the Iron Curtain, where energy is always short, 
The Soviets are the world's best conservationists because they sit on energy sources bigger than any in the world, bigger than Saudi Arabia's, anybody else's, but they're unable to get them out of the ground. Their chronic energy shortages, what do they mean? The housewives sometimes get up at two in the morning to bake a cake because they don't have to risk the power being turned off or the gas being turned off as it very often is in the evening or in the afternoon or in the morning. Whose power does never get turned off? Who has all the standby diesel generators? The army, the police, the secret police and these people. That is how lack of energy is tied into big government. Finally, what should we do about it? I think there's only one thing to do, that is go to the people and tell them the truth. Tell them in whose interest it is to have the big solar collectors as a rich man's toy and to freeze society in a state where upward mobility is impossible. It is no good, I believe, to count on the help of big business, which I have found has little spine and begs to be kicked harder. Among utilities, there are better utilities and worse utilities in how aggressive or how cowardly they are. And I think here in Los Angeles, Southern California, Edison, you have one of the better utilities. But no matter how their hands are tied, they are shackled, they are being harassed by government-financed interveners, and most of them, with very honorable exceptions, I don't want to generalize, but most utility workers know only one thing, and that is how to produce power, and they will burn their own bodies in the boilers to give the Sierra Club another kilowatt hour for its lights. <laughs> Who then will help us to get the truth out. The people who will suffer most, the small businessmen, the farmers, the American farmer who gets more out per acre than anybody else in the world, in fact, who feeds much of the rest of the world, and who has more spine, as the Iowa farmers have shown, than his government in calling for a boycott when a boycott is due. They will help. The little people, the businessmen, the poor, the minorities. They, there is one thing about these Sierra Clubbers and Friends of the Earth. I don't know how many chapters they have in Beverly Hills, but I'm sure they don't have a single one in Watts. <laughs> It is my belief that things lately have been improving, that the American people have, are beginning to wake up with the help of such good helpers as the Ayatollah Khomeini and Comrade Brezhnev. I believe that with the help of dedicated people such as your society, the only organization that I know among conservatives that doesn't talk to each other but goes out to the people and tells them. I believe, I believe the tables can yet be turned before it is too late. Thank you.